Hello, my name is Michael Keneally, and this brief video is about the celebration of the festival of Lunasa, the festival of our harvest. What does it mean? How do we do it? It happens every year around September the 1st. It's a festival of the ancient Irish going right back to the Iron Age and probably way beyond that. And basically, you can share with me about preparation and understanding of all the festivals of the year, all the festivals of the ancient Irish, on my Druid Forest School website, www.druidforestschool.com. And I'm speaking to you from the far west of Ireland, where Maggie and I have a healing centre and Airbnb. And indeed, we're not far from where the Tuadanan, the magical creators of the stream of spirituality which came through the ancient Irish, we're not far from where they landed. We're not far from where they fought the forces of less creative peoples near here at the Second Battle of Moitura. We're not far from where their great god, the Dagda, annually mated with the, the war goddess, the Morrigan, to ensure the protection of the sovereignty and the ethical occupation of our land. So, this is a most important festival. It's important to pause and ask yourself, what talents have I harvested this year? We need to identify them. We need to give thanks for them. We need to ensure that the harvest is brought in before the blight of winter comes. We need to have our harvest to carry through difficult times that may be ahead in our life. And it isn't just our talents. We have to remember that we actually owe the harvest, well, to our tribe as well. Are you satisfied that the tribe you belong to supports you, supports you manifesting your special gifts, bringing your special gifts to harvest? Are you with the right tribe? And give thanks to those who support all the work you've done to come to this moment of harvest. But it isn't just me, myself, it isn't just my tribe, important though my tribe is, it's also the land. Harvest can only come from the land and we have to give thanks to the land and indeed the ancient Irish honours the goddess of the land at harvest. But what is our land? These days we live in a semi-virtual reality. Certainly our land is our house. The place where our tribe is. But also these days, you can have a network which spans the earth and that can be your tribe that feeds you. There are so many like-minded, supportive people, for example, working away at healing modalities and spiritual pathways these days. And they can be so supportive. They can be our land, our landscape and our tribe. So, let's look in more detail about the festival of Lunasa. And the first thing is that in our lives, earthly and divine forces combine. We are actually supported by God. Everything we do isn't necessarily us. It's surrender to the divine as well. There's a balance. And of course, the ancient Irish knew this. 
And that is why they worshipped their gods at the same time as they gave thanks to harvest. Seems like someone's coming. Anyway. Um, and secondly, Lunasa is about the tribe and the land. The world owes so much to the magical people of skill, the people of the goddess Danu who arrived in Ireland near here, the Tuadanan or Tuatha de Danan. And basically they were people of such skill and such magic. Are you manifesting your skill and magic? Are you harvesting it now? But the two Adanan had to fight for their right to a space here in Ireland. And so at the second battle, they actually fought more people of the land, the Formorians. So the, the tribe fought the people of the land. In other words, they were one up in evolution from the earthy, they would say, you know, less skilled, maybe more bestial in some ways, for Morians, who dominated this land when they arrived. Indeed, the Tuadanan had been before and it was the Formorians' oppression that drove them away to go on their endless travels. But their endless travels meant that they learned skill and magic beyond belief. And remember in those days in the Iron Age, say 300, 400 BC, people traveled vast distances. The legends recall how the people from, how, who, how the people who invaded Ireland at those times, including the Tuandana, for example, came from Greece. Modern DNA studies clearly show there's a lot of Balkan blood in the Irish. Indeed, uh, DNA from the Ru Russian steppes, the southern Russian steppes area, people travelled vast distances. And in those travels, before they arrived here, the two Adanan learned magic and skills and craftsmanship beyond belief. And so they met the forces of the earth and in a sense of darkness, the Formorians near here at the second battle of Moitura, um, a, a mountain top really above Loch Arrow. And I've done videos from that site. And what was it that made them win? Well, basically, what made them win was the arrival of a new god, Lu. Lu had entered the consciousness across much of, you know, north, northern Europe, you know, northwestern Europe, for the, you know, the area we call France, and he arrived in Ireland. And the ancient, you know, the medieval manuscripts record the ancient awareness of Lu arriving at Tara when the Tuadanan were preparing for the great battle to fight the forces of darkness. And what did Lu bring? He brought ability at many skills and bringing them to harvest. The doorman at the court of Tara challenged the young incarnate god, the man who arrived at the palace door, and he said, what right have you to enter? And Lou listed this skill after another skill, and each time the doorman said, well, we've got someone who can do that. But at the end, Lou said, yes, but have you got anyone who can do all of these things? And of course they hadn't. And so, this, the, you know, the moral of this is that you need to develop and harvest your special skills. There's a view, for example, that we incarnate to work with karmas. Maybe burn and heal very difficult or negative karmas from previous lives. But I sincerely believe we also incarnate to manifest and develop our own special talents and very often the family we're born into their mission is possibly even to destroy us but certainly not, you know we wouldn't even know what our talents were because they don't conform with the family rules the family paradigm the family limitations but as is recognized in vedic astrology for example particularly in the sign Chitra, ruled by Vishvakarma, the heavenly architect, and I teach Vedic astrology, and I include it in my readings. 
the manifesting of our talents is supremely important in your incarnation of this life. Don't be world denying. Work to manifest your own special talents that can be identified by you particularly came to here. And then at this time, celebrate the harvesting. Don't ignore it, celebrate the harvesting now. Okay. And the other reason that we need to harvest now, well, obviously winter is coming. The tribe must get in its food to survive winter just as we as individuals must harvest our talents because inevitably there will be dark and difficult times and to have brought in your harvest will make those manageable under supreme achievement. So it isn't just individual harvest, you need your tribe and you need the land and must give thanks to both. But it's also about your sovereignty we have a right to our sovereignty, to our space on this earth. We have a right to protect it. And the ancient Irish knew this in that victory of the Tuatha over the forces of darkness, the Formorians, was secure that the good God, the Dagda, mated with the war goddess, the Morrigan. Near here, they, you know, legend has it, they reached standing astride the river Unshin, where it leaves Loch Arrow, to flow down to the Atlantic again near here. In fact, we're going here after this, we're going to the Atlantic coast after this filming. And it was, it is that union of sacred masculine and sacred feminine that secured the sovereignty and that allowed for the harvest. So already we're developing many themes that will give us a richer celebration of the festival of Lunasa. And indeed, the Tuadana never forgot that it was the goddess of the land who provided the landscape on which they grew their talents and created their harvest. And in the associated mythologies and memories in Irish and Welsh Celtic spiritual tradition, so much is about the fact that the hero has to win the hand of the goddess of the land. And we forget that at our peril. And also, so much is in those particular old stories from Ireland and Wales about how trickery comes in. And indeed, let's go on from trickery to communication, and often the two are a bit inseparable. Because, of course, Lou has often been aligned to Mercury, you know, the god Mercury and Mercury the planet, the planet of communication. And that is because Lu talked his way into the royal court at Tara, and before the battle, Lu spoke to all the people of the Tuadanan who were facing the terrible Formorians, and he asked each one of them, what is your special talent? that you can bring to defeat the forces of mindlessness and being too earthbound. And so it was his oratory that brought about the victory. So Lunasa calls upon us to value our skills of communication, to heal those skills if there's a problem with our communication. Perhaps we can't speak our truth. Perhaps we can tend to be too polite, perhaps we can tend to be evasive, perhaps we can be bullying. But this is the time to look at communication and Lu is one of the gods particularly orientated to that. And he's actually not just the energy of Mercury, he's also the energy of Uranus. He brought revolution to the people of the goddess Danu. He brought revolution to the Tuadanan, and so he brought revolution to Ireland in the Iron Age when the people, the Tuadanan, conquered the forces of darkness. And how did that happen? The god Lu took his slingshot and he bravely stood before the Formorian leader, the giant Balor, the evil king of the Formorians, who had an eye in the center of his forehead, and wherever the eye looked, you died. The person died at 
you know, we've met people like that who do that. That was what Balor's special gift was. But Lou slung his slingshot and it went right through the eye of Balor, went out through the back of his skill and a skull and killed other people. And Balor fell dead just on the mountain top above Loch Arrow. And the two were down and were victorious. So they had overcome tyranny. And they then had the opportunity to occupy the land they sought and continue to harvest their skills. What happened later is a different history, a different myth. In fact, they wearied of having to endlessly defend themselves against the crash, crassness of humanity. And when yet another wave of invaders arrived, the Malaysians, they felt it was too much. They tried coexisting for a while. But then, led by the Dagda, they retreated to the mounds and barrows round here, waiting, sometimes walking with humans, Maybe sometimes incarnating, sometimes taking a changing child. But they're waiting until the consciousness of humanity can open again to their nature and their skills. And so get in touch with me at www.druidforestschool.com where I share information about every festival and the preparation for it. You know, there are various themes which I won't go into here, but even particular themes of how the ancient Irish celebrated it with the reaffirmation of the tribe and the racing of horses. But you know, I don't want to get into that detail. You can enroll on my festivals course, you can enroll on my mystical energy work course. And my speciality is actually visionary contact with gods and goddesses. For five years, I studied spiritual forms new to the West, a university-based social anthropology study, living in the communities I studied. And I studied in great depth how in Hinduism and Buddhism, there's Tantra where you can develop clear appearance of a god and even become that god. And I bring those same skills to my course within the Druid Forest School on making visionary contact with the magnificent gods and goddesses of the ancient Irish. Thank you.